Well, American consumers are increasingly shifting towards a healthy lifestyle, and there were over 6 billion gym visits in 2018. This is according to the International Health Racket and Sports Club Association. Between 2012 and 2015, traditional gym memberships grew by 5%, as memberships to boutique studios grew by 70%. GoToPractice is a digital fitness directory that helps users find a class and fast. Joining us now is Joanna Stahl, founder and CEO of GoToPractice. Joanna, thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for having me. What was missing in the fitness market? What customer problem were you trying to solve when you launched this company? So when I launched GoToPractice, it was really based on the consumer need and watching consumers shift their energy across every industry. Um, so in fitness specifically, back in 2012, only 2% of gym members were buying other fitness experiences every month. And today, that's clearly over 25%. Wow, so how does this work? How do people take advantage of it? So with Go to Practice, it's really a very simple search, book, and buy directory. Uh, there's 100,000 gyms on the, on the database today, and it'll keep updating and growing over time. And then um, people can, it'll get smarter as we go. So right now, it's based on proximity and then price and amenities, and then it'll start to learn you. So, um, you know, if you love yoga, if you love high intensity interval training types of workouts, if you love to just walk into a gym and just work out, it'll start to track that and then re recommend things for you. So do you have relationships with these gyms, these boutiques? Yeah, so there's about 100,000 gyms across the U.S. and there's, let's just say, about 20 companies that run all the software behind it. So I'm building the relationships with the gym owners directly and the software companies behind it so that I can show you all of the inventory. How does it differ from ClassPass? So ClassPass, think about, we almost built Groupon before we built OpenTable. So there's no extra inventory, there's no uh, memberships to go to practice. What I built was basically a true directory. So all of the aggregators that are out there, ClassPass included, has somewhere from a few hundred gyms to a few thousand gyms, and I have a hundred thousand gyms. So I'm showing you every fitness option, regardless if you can buy it through me or not. So you mentioned there is not a subscription no for subscription. go to practice. So what's your monetization yeah, strategy? Yes, so the gym set the price, and then I just take a piece of that. So it's I'm all back end. I am literally like the champion of all fitness consumers out there. So in terms of usage, are you seeing users go across a ton of different fitness studios? Do they end up becoming a yeah. member of one? How does yeah. what's kind of the mix? So the fun part is so the industry is very segmented right now, and everyone is going more and more transient. And transient is like the way of life. Like I, I'm a member of 24 Hour Fitness, but I want to work out at SoulCycle. Or I'm a member at Blink, but I want to go try this workout. Or we're friends and we all want to go work out together. Um, so it's really use case and transient. So one in four people are members of gym and, and then buying something else. And then, um, so basically go to practice just that takes that user experience and makes it better. You've been in the fitness space for 20 years. I know. Yes, you've got a lot of experience. <laughs> oh. How have you seen technology change the industry over time? I was thinking about this this morning, and I'm like, about 20 years ago, I was making a mixtape. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> Put it in my Walkman yeah. and would bring it to the gym and like no technology. I mean, I was wearing a heart rate monitor back then, so that's a little bit still consistent. Um, so connected fitness is obviously a huge buzzword that's happened over 20 years. Um, technology, I, I mean, even the stereo systems, to the microphones, to the lighting, to the gym equipment, but the software behind the gyms has really changed and evolved for the better, running, running the businesses in a smarter way. And then things like directories out there are across every industry, but it's nice that fitness is, is kind of part of it now, too. What about in-demand at-home fitness, whether it's a Peloton or a mirror? How do you kind of see that changing the landscape? So in my opinion, this is def definitely an opinion, um, I think that it's changed the at-home gym market, but I don't think it's changed the in-gym experience. So if you were, um, you know, previously you might have canceled your gym membership because you just had a baby and you would go home and maybe buy a treadmill or maybe come up with a workout DVD to do and now you bought a Peloton. So the average member of a gym goes and works out two to three times a week and then hopefully they're doing other fitness things on the side. So if they're using Peloton or if they're using Tonal or Mirror or, or, or a treadmill at home or going for a run, like to me the more you move the better. Has the fitness industry to you felt like an industry that's been male dominated and, and regardless of whether or not that is the case, what has it been like being a female in this industry? It's interesting. Um, so go to practice is really a tech platform that happens to be in the fitness industry. So from a technology perspective, I didn't realize I was a lesser gender until three years ago. Wow. For, I mean, it's just amazing. I thought I was equal. I thought I was better than if not equal to other salespeople. I was in media and advertising prior. Um, today in fitness, the fitness industry is not um, new to women. I mean, women are amazing content leaders and providers and whatever, but we are not typically the ones that are owning the businesses, and we're not the ones that are going after the large private equity funds to grow franchises. So there's still a lack, a huge lack in that. 
but I don't necessarily feel unbiased. And honestly, the people that have helped me most happen to be men. But since you've been in the industry for so long, for yeah. 20 years, how much improvement have you seen in terms of equality amongst men and women? Um, it's funny, I, I used to work for Lifetime Fitness back... Um, Which is my gym, by the oh, way. Yes? <laughs> On the there. west side. So great. Um, I love everything about Lifetime Fitness, the executive team included. Um, and some of my favorite people are from there. Um, but within Lifetime Fitness and, ex and other gyms uh, alone, you would see women as HR and marketing and group fitness. Mm -hmm. But you, it was pretty rare to see them like running a gym or being the operators or owning the facilities. And I think that is starting to shift. There are now CEOs and, and brands that have females. I mean, Orange Theory is created from a woman. But the franchisees are, and the owners are all men. Catch 22. Yeah. But we're doing great things. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Progress. So, okay. So, our last question that we want to toss to you is what advice would you give uh, to a, a woman looking to pursue a job in the fitness industry? So, I think that the fitness industry is super sexy. It's very appealing. It's, it ties to most people's passions, and I want to support that. I think that's great. You should do something you're passionate about. I think a lot of times people get into the fitness industry not realizing that it is a traditional business and it's a very hard business. So you really have to not only be passionate about fitness, but also have the either the skill set yourself or be able to rally the team behind you to do whatever it is that you would like to do. Oh wait, Joanna Stahl, founder and CEO of Go to Practice. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.